Welcome to our video, Japan and the World. The topic for this time is, negotiate with Moscow to end the Ukraine war and prevent nuclear devastation. I would like to focus on the commentary in The Hill by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Donald Trump Jr., opinion contributors. Negotiate with Moscow to end the Ukraine war and prevent nuclear devastation by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Donald Trump Jr., opinion contributors. The New York Times reported Thursday that the Biden administration is considering allowing Ukraine to use NATO-provided long-range precision weapons against targets deep inside Russia. Such a decision would put the world at greater risk of nuclear conflagration than at any time since the Cuban Missile Crisis. At a time when American leaders should be focused on finding a diplomatic off-ramp to a war that should never have been allowed to take place, the Biden-Harris administration is instead pursuing a policy that Russia says it will interpret as an act of war. In the words of Vladimir Putin, long-range strikes in Russia will mean that NATO countries, the United States and European countries, are at war with Russia. Some American analysts believe Putin is bluffing and favor calling his bluff. As the Times reported, easing the restrictions on Western weapons will not cause Moscow to escalate. Seventeen former ambassadors and generals wrote in a letter to the administration this week, we know this because Ukraine is already striking territory. Russia considers its own, including Crimea and Kursk, with these weapons, and Moscow's response remains unchanged. These analysts are mistaking restraint for weakness. In essence, they are advocating a strategy of brinksmanship. Each escalation, from HIMARS to cluster munitions to Abrams tanks to F-16s to ATAC AMS, draws the world closer to the brink of Armageddon. Their logic seems to be that if you goad a bear five times and it does not respond, it is safe to goad him even harder a sixth time. Such a strategy might be reasonable if the bear had no teeth. The hawks in the Biden administration seem to have forgotten that Russia is a nuclear power. They have forgotten the wisdom of John F. Kennedy, who said in 1963, nuclear powers must avert those confrontations which bring an adversary to a choice of either a humiliating retreat or a nuclear war. We should take this advice seriously. Putin has signaled numerous times that Russia would use nuclear weapons in extreme circumstances. In September 2022, Putin said, if the territorial integrity of our country is threatened, we will without doubt use all available means to protect Russia and our people. This is not a bluff. In March 2023, he struck a deal with Belarus to station tactical nuclear weapons there. Earlier this month, Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov announced that Russia would be amending its nuclear doctrine in response to Western involvement in the Ukraine war. Imagine if Russia were providing another country with missiles, training and targeting information to strike deep into American territory. The U.S. would never tolerate it. We should not expect Russia to tolerate it either. This game of nuclear chicken has gone far enough. There is no remaining step between firing U.S. missiles deep into Russian territory and a nuclear exchange. We cannot get any closer to the brink than this. And for what? To weaken Russia? To control Ukraine's minerals? No vital American interest is at stake. To risk nuclear conflict for the sake of the neoconservative fantasy of global full-spectrum dominance is madness. The war fever in the U.S. foreign policy establishment is at such a pitch that it is hard to tell whether they believe their own rhetoric. In last Tuesday's debate, Vice President Kamala Harris conjured up images of Russian forces rolling across Europe. Surely she must know how absurd that is. For one thing, Russia can barely wrest a few provinces from Ukraine, which is by no means one of Europe's great powers. Secondly, Russia made its war aims very clear at the outset. Most notably, Ukrainian neutrality and a halt to NATO's eastward expansion. Hundreds of thousands of lost lives, and hundreds of billions of dollars later, no one is better off, not Europe, not America, and certainly not Ukraine. It is past time to de-escalate this conflict. This is more important than any of the political issues our nation argues about. Nuclear war would mean the end of civilization as we know it, maybe even the end of the human species. Former President Donald Trump has vowed to end this war, but by the time he takes office, it might be too late. 
We need to demand right now that Harris and President Biden reverse their insane war agenda and open direct negotiations with Moscow. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is an environmental lawyer and public health advocate. Donald Trump Jr. is executive vice president of the Trump Organization.